This portion of the show is brought to you by Sportsman's Bar and Grill. This is the Jeff Orvid Show. All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for listening. Jeff Orvitz here. Mark Howitz with me. I'm running a little ragged, a little behind because uh, we've been listening to this tape that was put out, this audio recording. Uh, was that from the Daily Mail, Mark? Yeah, it came out through the Daily Mail. Other websites are now reporting on it. Oh, are you well. seeing it? Is it popping up now? Yeah, the funny thing is I had to switch from Googling the topic to uh, Microsoft Bing for this one. I got a lot more results. Okay, good. So and he, here's the problem. And this is a tape purpur- purported to be, well, it is because I have a source um, that I confirmed this with, Carrie Lake, and you can tell it's Carrie Lake. And it's purported to be on the other end of the conversation, Arizona um, head of the Arizona Republican Party, former Trump. Um, he, I think he was the treasurer in 2020 for the Trump campaign. Uh, in yeah, what yeah, served on NASA in what Trump. the Daily Mail is calling and others um, a, an attempt to bribe Carrie Lake not to run for public office. Uh, I want to be clear. I haven't had as much time as I like to review and we only played the audio I think twice at this point and rewound a couple parts where Mark and I were like really did, did what is it that bad in our country is this stuff actually happen we, we we know this kind of stuff's happening but to hear it on tape yes yeah, it's scary it's a scary recording there's only two options for this either it's a really deep 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 fake or it's the real thing of someone named Jeff yeah. Bribing Terry Lake not to run. Yes. Uh, and that's, uh, they're claiming and, um, a source that I have is claiming, um, that it is the state party leader. And this was t- taken a while back, the, the, the tape, the mm-hmm. recording, uh, yesterday or recently he was denying that there was ever any kind of conversation. Another talk show host in another part of the state was saying, well, I'm going to bring out the tape. Then the daily mail article hits, which they have an, an audio recording. Um, we'll get a link up for you on, on that one in which they are encouraging her not to run. Let me just, I, I got a couple clips is all we're going to do today. And we'll have more time to kind of run through this. And then I think this probably is like the melee speech deserves to be played several times uh, because if this all pans out and like I said, uh, you know, DeWitt, DeWitt was um, saying no to this just yesterday. Um, and Lake's people are saying, yeah, it's a legit tape. So what's going on? What is, uh, I'm assuming this is our friend. Oh, this is, this is, this is back east. They, there are very powerful people that want to keep you out. I the know service. they do. But they're willing to put their money where their mouth is in a big way. So, this conversation never happened. Th- this is crazy though. They should want me. I'm a great candidate. People love me. These people are corrupt. Well, maybe you're right. They are right. They are corrupt. Maybe. This is a wrap. Don't don't go. Do you ever though? I'll get myself in trouble. This, if you if you if you say no, that's just fine. It's your choice. Don't tell people. I They're gonna have try to have me murdered. Don't tell people. They're gonna try to have me murdered. I mean, this is the beginning of this recording. Um, I haven't been able to verify who made the recording. When you listen to this whole, what was it, about 12 minutes, Mark? Listen to the whole thing, 10 minutes. Um, sounds like the recording is pretty close because they go from an inside location to an outside location at the end. Yeah, and it, and it seriously has the sound of, you know, we, are, we do audio stuff. And it sounds like a lapel mic hidden on Carrie Lake yeah. picking up Jeff, whoever it is. But that's just an assumption. In the background. That's just what it sounds like yeah. from an audio perspective. Yeah. And, you know, I said bribe. I don't know. Let's let the listeners think what they want. When someone offers you money, name your price not to run for office. Yeah, and then they get into, like, that? a job, like, you know, an offer from people back east. I don't Give know. a job in a company. Yeah, I don't know payroll. what the offer is back east. I, I don't know anything. All I know is I listen to this and... The, who, if if that truly is who we think it is in the beginning of tape, it sounds so sleazy. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you know, just wow, really. Yeah. Um, this this guy is actually do in this day and age. You got to assume you're being recorded all over the place. We were talking about this before we came on air. Like, 
Uh, the, old, the old mobster scenes, you know, where they're whispering in whispering the ear and in, stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can't yeah. even do that now. You got to be like, you got to have a little sense. Naked Carrie in a Lake, hot tub or something, man. Carrie Lake was a, a newscaster, you know, an yeah. woman here in Arizona for a long time. You know, she's been around the system. She knows, I'm sure, undercover journalism just from being in the industry. And in Arizona, you are allowed to record secretly. One, any, one way, as long as one person knows. As long as the yeah. person recording knows. Yeah, you can't, you can't bug a room. Mark couldn't leave a bug in here, a recording device, right? And then leave. And then right. I don't know about it. But Mark right now could be wired up and not tell me. I could be having my laptops in front of me. I could exactly. be recording this whole conversation. And I assume that everybody who it nowadays is recording everything. I mean, yep. we're getting to the Google Glasses and the, all that crap, right? Where you oh, just, yeah. There's everything's, on everything's every recorded. Corner now. Again, I, I, I want to, um, it's, it's kind of interesting because I just texted um, the chairman of the Republican Party in Arizona uh, like a couple days ago to bring his attention to the Coconino County recorders issue. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, we, sh you looking into this? This is something that I think is a, a big concern here in the state. Uh, so it was weird because I hadn't talked and he has been on the program multiple times in the past. Um, but I haven't talked to him in quite a while. Again, uh, the people, the source that I have is saying, yeah, that, that was recorded. We're not saying who recorded it. Um, and we obviously verify that it's Lake. We verify that it's DeWitt. So we'll see we what happens. Where it was recorded, though. I don't know. So, for example, don't know. in Arizona, you can record. In California, unless you're convinced a crime is happening, yeah. you're not supposed to record. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know where this recording happened. It might have been out of state where Carrie Lake couldn't have revealed it right away. We don't know. Perhaps. I, yeah. I, you know, honestly, I have no idea there. I just thought that it was something so big that I wanted to get out there, you know, right away because it's starting to break. You said mm -hmm. starting to hit all over the place. And you know, the daily mail, let me go to their article. Um, you know, look, before I do that, because I'm going to fall behind here, um, because of craziness like this, I like to own a little bit of physical gold and silver because the walls seem to be closing in Mark. Right. I mean, it's just, this is insanity. And maybe a bulletproof vest, you know, if you're, I know. And like during that tape, they get into, you know, car bombs and stuff. Yeah. It, and the that, it's that are scary stuff. It's scary. Yeah. Anyway, I, I like to own a little bit of physical gold and silver. I've been buying gold and silver uh, from my good friends at uh, desert gold exchange, Justin and his family company. They keep their overhead low. They pass the savings on to you. This is guaranteed, guaranteed lowest fees, lowest commissions out there and tell them I sent you. Tell them you heard it right here on the show. They'll treat you really good. 888-852-4343. 888-852-4343. Or go to desertgoldexchange.com. I'll play one more. Should I play one yes, more? This play. is about seven, yeah. seven minutes into it. Um, reiterating that, hey, here's what I got for you. Whatever you want to. No, that's, uh, that's melee. Is there a number at which. Here we go. I can be bought. <laughs> that's what it's about. You can take a pause for a couple of years. No. And then go right back to what you're doing. <laughs> No. 10 million, 20 million, third, no, no, no. A billion, no. This is not about money. This is about our country. I think it's disturbing that they would even, that anybody would think this is. I, I, no, to be fair, even me, even me, I'll say this. I want a fresh face right now. For the reason that I've never seen anyone, I can't think of a single person in a federal race who lost, ran in one. I can't mm -hmm. think of it. If you can think of it, let me know. I am not going to let these people who hate our country tell me not to run. You should call them and tell them to get behind me. I, mean, I, I, I can win and they should words. get behind me. I, would, I will happily say those words. Yeah. Do you think my words will carry any weight? No. Okay, well, did you think you would come in here and that I would be bought? <laughs> <laughs> it's not being bought. Yes, it is. It's I think. What it I is think. being bought. No. They they are trying to buy me out of running. What and I it's think. it's actually. I mean, all right. I'm flattered. It's I'm offended. I'm offended what for think. our country. What we I have people this. like this who live here. What I think is this is it can give you an incredible opportunity to have a bigger voice to fight for stuff than you currently. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't want to deal with people like this. These people are un-American, and I, I think they're unethical, and I would be absolutely immoral if I did that. Again, that's immoral. I couldn't. I couldn't look at my. I, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror if I 
you know. It's just, it's very powerful people. It's very powerful people. I mean, I bet it is. This, you've been around this stuff for a long time, Mark. I mean, what kind of shenanigans go on behind yeah. the scenes? I, I was talking to you a little bit about this before the show started. You know, I ran for office in 2008 as a Democrat for the state legislature, and I ran up against a uh, Navajo candidate who, when I inspected his signatures to get on the ballot, I found multiple signatures as in pages and pages that were all the same handwriting. Oh yeah. In other yeah. words, forged. Yeah. And, uh, we don't remember the mayoral candidate yeah. and Flagstaff yeah. uh, during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And he got busted. And so the, the mayoral trying, candidate, yeah, the mayoral yeah. candidate, yeah, yeah, yeah. the candidate I was running against, he, I took him to court over it and I was told by the clean elections commission that I was not allowed to hire a handwriting expert. <laughs> I was not allowed to hire a lawyer, no. but he was allowed to have as many lawyers as the Democrat Party wanted to supply for him. Well, you were running as a Democrat. I though. was running as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. So Democrat versus Democrat. Yeah. That inner party stuff can get wicked. Really nasty. And that's, that's, what, that's what this appears to be. Yeah. And I had it's, calls from every major Democrat player in the state. The, the majority mm -hmm. leader in the House, uh, down to the, the Democrat mayor of Flagstaff, and everybody in between saying, you've got to drop this. The color of your skin is wrong his is brown, yours is white. We oh, don't wow. want to offend anybody with brown skin by favoring a white candidate, even if your claims are true. Mm. Uh, you know, I got calls. So you're getting a full court press. And this is back this a long time from ago. From the too. Clean Elections Commission, yeah. from the Democrat Party, yeah. top down. Is this when you left the Democrat Party? Or? I did. Yeah, yeah after they, that. You were, you were they done blocked that. me out. They, you know, they have their software in both parties that tell you where all your um, constituents live. Yeah, you know, the high efficacy voters, people yep. are out there all the time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And they locked me out of that whole system. Hmm. And uh, said, no, because you're, you're running against a, a brown candidate, even though he forged signatures and was deceitful about how he got on the ballot. Hmm. We're not going to stand with this you. Is, you this got is, the wrong color of skin. This is, this is crazy stuff. I, am, um, I will look into this more. Uh, we will try to get, uh, I, I, have a pro, I have a feeling that we won't hear from, um, you know, to wait on this. Probably um, not. <laughs> but we will try. Um, I've been confirmed that it was Lake on the recording. You can tell yep. it's Lake. Um, at first, I wasn't sure it didn't sound. But th this is an era of, you know, deep fakes and all that. So you're like, you're really cautious. You're like, well, what what is this? But uh, this story has been floating around for, I guess, about a year or so that, hey, there was an attempt for this to happen. The last part, the last recording I played you, well, I don't, I'm not a lawyer. I have no idea. I don't think it is it, it, it's slimy party stuff. If I were to go to Mark and say, Hey, I don't want you to run, you know, we got a better position for you to, you your voice will be heard. You can kind of go out, like, don't run. we got something better for you. But the first part where it's like, you know, powerful people back East and, and multiple times during the recording, it's, you know, get you set up into something that it's a, it's a monetary, it sounds like mm -hmm. a monetary exchange. Uh, I would imagine that runs afoul of something. Uh, again, not a lawyer here, but that, that sounds like some serious legal troubles in, uh, yeah. in the election world. I'm not a lawyer either, but yeah. if, I, if I went to a, a sitting elected official and said, step down from your office and we'll give you a job at XYZ Corporation, what would that be considered? Isn't it very similar to that? I, I, you would think. Again, I, pff, it, it's so slimy and it's so scary too. Um, at the very end of the recording, which I didn't have time to pull, um, I think... Lake said something to the effect of, why don't you expose this? You know, mm -hmm. why don't you bring this out? And the response was, uh, I don't want to be turning my key and my car blows up or a car bomb or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what he said. I mean, this it's is unbelievable. This is so I hope that who, first of all, who, if this all pans out here, um, who was the people that did he do this on his own and he was just doing it? Um, or who sent them? Because right. he mentioned back east, people back east, you know, powerful men, powerful people mm -hmm. back east. Who are those people? You know, who are those? I'd love to know that. The reality is the entrenched Republican swamp really hates the new Republican movement yeah. of Kerry and Trump Lake and Trump. Yep, yep. You know, if we look at the, the Maricopa County recorder and the Maricopa County election official, um, Bill Gates, they both worked to create a PAC, a political action committee, to oppose candidates like Kerry Lake mm -hmm. and like Donald Trump. And they are Republicans. These are yeah. Republicans well, who spent money, raised money, 
as the people counting your ballots to oppose Carrie Lake. Yeah. It's, and it's 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 so slimy and bad what's what's happening. When Trump it's, got into the Republican Party, he talked to, well he talks about going to Washington to drain the swamp, but the swamp is in his own party. Yeah, it is. And I actually got asked this today by somebody. As you know, I made a big deal about leaving the Republican Party. What's it been, Mark? Six months? Something like that. that Last fall. Yeah. Left the Republican Party because I said, that's it. I'm so frustrated with the crap. And some people assumed I was going to the Democrat Party or something. I mean, it's like, what are you, brain dead? I mean, you're not listening. (laughs) Obviously, you don't know who I am. And I actually was asked today by somebody uh, regarding interviews and stuff. Well, I heard that you're no longer a Republican. I said, yeah, I left the Republican party. I said, they're, I'm not playing this game anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not conservative enough for me anymore. There's too many rhinos. You guys need to work all that out. I'm not spending my time doing that anymore. Uh, if, if you got a true, good, conservative, decent candidate, pff, come on. Well, yep. everybody's welcome, but don't not come on my show because you think I'm what I became a leftist because I left the Republican party. I, I'm starting <laughs> to question the people that stay in the Republican party at this point. Really? You know? yeah. I mean, come on. It's like, this is uh, dirty, dirty stuff. I'm sure it happens more than we realize. It's just this era of easy recordings um, and stuff like that. It's, uh, it comes out more, I guess. So yeah, cra- I, crazy. I, I, I just wish I would have recorded all the stuff I heard oh, back yeah. when I ran for office. It was unbelievable. Jeff. I have several of those that I wish yeah. I had done too. Conversations you know? with, I'll say it, you know, with Ann Kirkpatrick. Yeah. You know, yeah on the phone with me, telling yeah. me how to knock people off the ballot and which yeah. ones to oh, take yeah. off the yeah. ballot. It's cra- when you start volunteering and working these campaigns, it's your eyes are, you're like, oh my God, this is such slimy dirtbag stuff. All right. Uh, if you want to get a second set of eyes on your portfolio and get a second opinion as to what's going on, why don't you do what I do and talk with Glenn Least of WT Wealth Management. He's coming on the show this week, so look forward to his first of this year update. Uh, Glenn Lee shares a lot of your values. I think you've heard that over the years with him coming on here. Uh, the market's kind of been hitting. <laughs> excuse me. Still got that cough. market's been still hitting those kind of all-time highs, so it's that time of caution, I guess. And, mm-hmm. you know, hey, talk to Glenn Lee. See what he can do for you. 928-225-2474. That's 928-225-2474. That's Glenn Least with WT Wealth Management. 928-225-2474. Got my board all mixed up now. Quick break. Back in a minute. Hey, if you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up The Jeff Orbit Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. You're listening to The Jeff Orbit Show. Chip in your windshield. Remember to call my good friends at Diamond Auto Glass, and thanks to them for their longtime sponsorship of the show. To get more info at the differencesclear.com. That's the differencesclear.com. Mark Howitz here with me. It is, um, it is uh, New Hampshire primary. New Hampshire um, primary today, yep. Trump and Haley, and there's somebody else and somebody else. Um, <laughs> the Democrat Party's abandoned the voters of New Hampshire and Iowa, you know, basically don't come here. I hear that they were telling people to write in his name, though. Because they were concerned that, you know, he was going to have the, the no-show um, appearance, uh, talking about Biden. Yeah. Um, but Trump and Haley, obviously, the big race. I, You got any predictions? I mean, I think Trump's going to, I think I think he's going to win it pretty handily tonight. I um, think so, too. And he'll be the nominee. He's yeah. going to be the nominee. I've been saying this forever. He is expected to be the nominee. DeSantis um, has been a, just kind of skipped New Hampshire. He's put more money on uh, the next. He's done. He's out. Is he out? Yeah. Did, yeah. did he step out? Okay. Yeah. You, you haven't been paying attention the past couple attention. of days. When did he no, step he, out? He backed out Sunday night. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's done. He endorsed He endorsed oh. Trump. So Haley yeah. You've Trump. been working on your taxes. You I, Jeff, I, I literally <laughs> checked out for the last couple of days. Yeah. I am so frustrated with the IRS. I'm a small business owner. Yeah. And every year it's new rules. Yeah. Different paperwork. I, I know. You get and, into a, a void. Angela is like in another world right now. She does all the tax stuff. That's it's, that's her deal. You, you know, you should be very thankful. I'm very thankful. It's, I'm very thankful. I mean, it's it's you know, it's a nightmare to deal with that stuff, and they keep making more rules on top of more rules. So, what I was doing the last couple of days is figuring out the rule, new rules for the 1099s. Yeah, which you give to subcontractors, 
And the question is, first of all, why do I have to give a paper to my subcontractor to tell him how much money he made? He should have his own bookkeeping. I'm not his bookkeeper. I shouldn't have to do this paperwork. Yeah. Why? I never understood that either. It's a way that you're, it's a way for them to counter check what the other person's reporting. Right. Because you're, you're filing that W-2 and it's like, oh, it's, it's a way for them to check it. That's why they'd all love a, a, a central bank digital currency. Yep. Because then if, you won't even need to prepare taxes because it's all going to be a ledger in some supercomputer somewhere. Yeah. Which that means, AI will sort You'll get out. into a lot more as bartering. You'll yeah. See. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, hard to track. They'll try to crunch that too. But the Soviets tried to do that and there was always a black market. So DeSantis stepped out. Yeah. He's got, that was yeah. a surprise to me. Yeah. I, so I, I, it's just Haley and Trump. And Haley will have to go soon, but she has nothing to lose, so she might as well just stick in there. And there's no way, well, I shouldn't say there's no way she's going to be in administration, because you really do never know with Trump. <laughs> yes. he, he, I mean, DeSantis was the biggest scumbag just a couple she days was ago. She last administration. I mean, come on. Yeah, she De- the DeSantis, UN. though, was the biggest scumbag just a couple days ago to Trump, and then they made up. They made up. And they're all, like, you know, hugging and stuff at this point, and DeSantis went and endorsed him. And uh, DeSantis is a class act, though. He really came out. He says, hey, if there's any path for me to do this, I'd continue, but I'm not going to take my donors money and, you know, my staff and all that. And when I see no clear path mm-hmm. and then he quickly endorsed Trump and said he was, uh, you know, the one we got to get behind. He doesn't want Haley. And so even with all the vitriol that was happening. So, so you got to wonder all the phone calls that went on behind the scenes. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm uh, sure promises that were made. I wonder if recordings were made. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that's in some states. It's illegal to do. Yeah. 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 Well, thankfully we live in Arizona where you can actually record things. <sighs> Yeah, that's that's just some cra- crazy stuff happening there. Um, so this is a bit scary to me because if Trump is convicted and barred from being president because he's a felon, yeah, but the Constitution doesn't say anything about that. But go ahead. Well, you can't be a president if you can't. It doesn't say that. Are you sure? If I'm positive. It says it says you can't be a member of Congress. It says you know um, it, it does not list president. I don't does remember not list the, president. It does not list president, and that's. That's the, the argument against the, the Maine folks and the, who was it, Maine and Colorado? Colorado? Yeah. Was, well, the first argument is there's no charges yet. The second argument is just all, okay, okay, hearsay. And the second argument is even if there were charges, there isn't a conviction. And then even if there was a conviction, if you, conviction, if you read the Constitution, it does not specifically mention president. It members right. like Congress and some other people. I'll, get the, I'll dig up the exact I word. Dig that out. Yeah, that, that, dig that up during the break. And we got some, we got some guests coming up, by the way. Um, I've got someone from the hand count. Um, uh, what's this called? Hand count. Help me out here, Mark. Oh, this guy's going uh, around yes. put, promoting a group and I will get it when we come back from <laughs> break. In Camp Verde recently or coming to Camp Verde. Yeah, he's, no, he's in Camp Verde uh, right now promoting hand counting the ballots um, going forward. He's, he's doing a road show. Hand count road show is what it is now. <laughs> I, I got it. It's all coming to me. It's all coming to me. Um, the hand count road show is happening today in Camp Verde the, and you can go there. It's at uh, 1406 North Boot Hill Drive starting at 6 p.m. And we're going to have, um, we're going to, we're going to have him on to talk about how they're going to, they've been to a hundred counties already pushing for grassroots election officials, commission, commissioner, sheriffs, and other countywide and city officials to answer questions and provide suggest, suggestions and pass forward to secure our elections. So if you're in that area, um, you might want to check that out, but we're going to have him on next and talk about what's going on with the hand count roadshow and his proposal to get back to a, more of a hand count system. Then we've got uh, representative uh, David Cook in the second hour of the show. He wants to talk about a couple of bills he's working on trying to pass down there. And remember, he's also running against, um, Wendy Rogers for the Senate LD seven. That was going to be heated, right? Yeah, That's going to be Senate. absolutely heated. So stick around for all that and love to hear from you. Let's put out the email address. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. And you can text me too. I don't know if I can text you back though. And I'll tell you that story later. It's a consequence of new laws that went into effect. You can text 877-9713-971. You need new blind shutters or shades, call my friends at the Blind Brothers. They'll take really good care of you. Get your new blind shutters or shades, just like Angela and I did. Oh, about a year ago or so, year and a half ago. Um, great blinds, great shutters, great shades, great price. Uh, get half off installation when you mention the Jeff Orvitz show. Here's the number, 928-634-2423. 928-634-2423. Go to theblindbrothers.com. Hey, if you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up the Jeff Orvitz Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that.
You're listening to The Jeff Orovitz Show. This is The Jeff Orovitz Show. All right, welcome back. Mark Howard here with me. I'm a little flustered. At, at, at the, that, that audio recording was just insane. I'm still just like trying to digest that. And I know yeah. people probably want more of that. Um, and we will. I mean, I think I'll play the whole thing once I um, have some time to go through it because there's some swear words in there. And Mark and I caught one real quick. And we're like, oh, man, catch a beep. You know, we're sitting there. Uh, so anyway, we got uh, Representative David Cook uh, coming up in hour two of the show. I'm um, going to talk about a couple bills down at the legislature. Plus, he's running uh, against can't, um, Senator Wendy Rogers. That's and, David Cook running against Senator Wendy yes, Rogers for LD7. Yes, and here comes the source of my confusion because we have another Cook. We have Mark Cook with the Hand Count Road Show who's down in the Camp Verde area right now. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good, good to, good to hear from you. Good, welcome to Arizona. You've been going around to over 100 counties in the U.S., to promote, um, you know, election integrity issues, and I'll get you to break it all down for us, as well as hand counting of ballots. Um, what do you have going on? What What is your organization trying to do, Mark? Okay, so it, it is actually, it's just me. I'm a one-man show uh, that is controlled by nobody. I'm just doing this for my fellow citizens. I have been in cybersecurity uh, and forensics, uh, running an IT company for over 30 years, I got involved just shortly after the 2020 election when I was curious, along with hundreds of millions of other of my citizens, as to what actually happened. Uh, we had half the country saying there's a problem. Half the country said there's not a problem. You guys are all crazy. I wanted to get to the bottom of it. So I dove in and actually ended up out near D.C. and lived in a hotel room for two months, which happened to be Sydney Powell's war room after her team was evacuated. I worked out of that hotel room along with a group of other people trying to find how we determine where the fraud is and bring it forward by January 6th. And for two months, I got a first hand look at everything that was going on and realized how dire things really were and how much our, my fellow citizens were being lied to and how much we really didn't know. Mm. And so I have since then been trying to help educate people so they know truly what's going on so we can figure out how to get out of this and fix our system. Uh, what happened very simply is our election system over a period of decades was gradually taken away from the citizens, moved further and further away from the citizens, centralized and put into control um, by these corporations. So there's all these corporations and government entities that control the elections that really belong to the citizens. And so I'm trying to get us back to a point where the entire election system is back into view and control of the very citizens that depend okay. on it to control every facet of their life like local and their very representative local, local hands. Mark, is that what you're proposing? A absolutely. Absolutely. It's, Our it's, elections it's, should be run by the citizens in each County. Mm -hmm. They should, the well, results it's, it's, should come it's, out of the it's, County level. It's supposed to be like that. And we recently had an issue in Coconino County, which we're still trying to unwind and unpack where the Coconino County recorder subscribed to an outside group that had deep ties to the Zuck Bucks controversy in, in 2020. Um, Arizona and 24 other states put into law that you can't take outside money from outside groups. They didn't do that. Instead, they subscribed to a service and what the Federalist is calling, and we had him on, skirting Arizona law. Um, so it's like, and I asked this question, Mark, and let me get your take on this. Um, Mark Cook, we got another Mark here, Mark Howard as well. Um, I asked the question of, well, aren't you, re aren't you elected as a recorder and have staff to run our local elections? Why do we even need anyone outside? Uh, exactly. Um, but it's, it's all coordinated. It's not just what happened in Coconino. It's all over the country that this has happened. And it's different things are happening in different places, but the overall, goal of the cabal, which is the uh, a corrupt political establishment that has ties in some way to these companies as well. They all work together, conspire together to maintain control and power over the citizens. It's not a Democrat or Republican issue. It is a citizens versus this cabal of cor a corrupt political elites that have usurped uh, our election system. 
Well, Mark, you hit us on the right day because you missed it in the beginning of the show. We played a tape that's purported of it's it's definitely Carrie Lake because we confirmed it with a source and it's purported to be the head of the Arizona GOP and talking about keeping her out of the race and allegations of um, bribery to keep Carrie Lake out. And Carrie Lake said, well, Mark, you heard it. Pound sand. Right. Yeah, basically, she, she said, said no pound price, sand. No yeah. Price. Yeah. And uh, all recorded. And um, this thing's going to, I think, explode pretty quickly. What do we do? How do we do, you mentioned? Hand, I mean, it's called hand count roadshow. Uh, is that one thing going getting rid of the machines, going back to all hand counting of, of the individual ballots? That, that's one thing we need to do. There's okay. four pillars to our election. Yeah, give me those four. Voter, so there's a voter registration system, a voter validation system, the tabulation system and the reporting system. There's four main pillars. And if you only fix one of them, if you only fix the machines and go back to hand count, that's pillar number three. If you only fix that, you still got one, two, and four that are left. And they only need one of these to manipulate the election. Just a single one is all they need out of four. And they got control of all four. So it's going to be a multifaceted approach to address the vulnerabilities of each of the four. And in my presentation on handcountroadshow.org is the website that has all the events listed. And I go out in person and talk to my fellow citizens at the county face-to-face. And what I do is I give a presentation that goes over these four main areas, what they mean, how they all work together, what the different software and hardware components are, the different companies involved, what the vulnerabilities are, how the evidence we found over the past three years prove that these vulnerabilities are being abused and then what the short-term and long-term mitigation strategies are to fix this problem. And we have an election coming up in 10 months. So in fact, primary is coming up even sooner. So yeah. we don't have time for a necessary a, to focus on the long-term mitigation strategies. We got to focus on the short-term mitigation strategies. And that's what I'm trying to put together right now for everyone. And right now, the, if you had to do, if you can only do one thing, you can get out and vote like you've never voted before. I mean, even in the primaries, absolutely overwhelm everything with real votes because real votes are much harder for them to manipulate if there's too many of them because it doesn't leave enough headroom to manipulate with the phantom voter registrations and, and the games that they play. Get out and vote like crazy. Create huge margins so it's clearly obvious who the real winner is. And when we get out to the general election, same thing. You vote like you've never voted before. Don't leave them headroom to manipulate with phantom records. Mark, should they be? You guys, should, should should people be switching back to um, voting in person versus the mail-in ballots? Absolutely. Real simple. What we need to do ultimately, the long term, is we've got to get and you have to register to vote in person. No more registering online or sending a form in. You have to bring your body in to register to vote. You fill out a paper registration card at your county. That confirms that you physically exist as a person in that county. That right there gets rid of a ton of fraud. Then when the election comes, you vote at the precinct in person on election day day, which should be a holiday. Everyone should be off work for it. So not this problem of, well, I don't have time to leave work to go vote. Well, there's no work that day because that's a national holiday and we all go vote that day. You go to the precinct that you are assigned on a paper poll book. Your name is looked up and they know who's in each precinct because that's all done beforehand. They have the voter registration cards there at the precinct. They compare the signature that you sign right there in front of them with your physical body with the voter registration card signature right there physically in front of them. They give you a ballot. You fill the ballot out. You drop it in a box. At the end of the day, the box is opened and the ballots are counted right there. They are counted where they are cast. They're not going to get in a car and go somewhere else or go to another room or go to another building or city or processing center because that's where all the fraud occurs. They're going to get counted right there when they're taken out of the box by the citizens that are living in that precinct out in the open with, I suggest, a camera overhead. Yep. And it, Put out the video, whether it's streamed or whether it's recorded and then put on the county website later. Scan all the ballots with scanners. We have technology. We can use technology to provide a transparent system 
rather than obfuscate things. All right, Mark. Yeah. So, I mean, this is not, this not rocket science and you nailed it right not. there. Um, we're yeah. running short on time. I want to remind people that you have an event coming up here at 6 PM, uh, in Camp Verde, seventh day Adventist, uh, church community center, 1406 North boot Hill drive. Um, that starts at six where you're going to go over a lot of this stuff. Um, and again, it's, um, the website's hand count roadshow, uh, again, 6 PM in Camp Verde right there at the, uh, Adventist church. Um, am I pronouncing that right, Mark? Yeah. I'm, I, yes. And, and it's it handcountroadshow.org. Okay. Dot O-R-G. Okay. Go there and contact me. Um, sign up for a show in your area. If you can't make it physically in person, go up there and request a visit and I will come to you in person. Okay. Mark, hey, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll look for you in more counties throughout the, throughout the state, throughout the country. We'll talk with you soon. Absolutely. Thank you. God bless. All right. I'd love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. He nailed us on the right day, right, Mark? He did. I mean, yeah. with, with the slimy <laughs> stuff that's going on in D.C. And we're just like, whoa, I'm still in shock over that audio. I'm still, yeah, you know, I am whirling that all around. The, and the Carrie Lake, uh, supposedly Jeff DeWitt. Yeah. Audio, uh, audio. And hey, don't run. I got my, you know, the people back east. Basically trying to buy Oof. Carrie Lake out of the out election. Out of the election. Yeah. yeah out of the election. Yeah, all right. Mark, talk talk Mark, with Jeff at iCloud.com. Come send in your comments. So Mark Cook brought up a good point, and that is about uh, voter registration. So uh, Wendy Rogers just released a press release, and you might have got it as well, about um, Arizona registering to vote in Arizona. If you're vo- registering for the whole ballot, you got to show ID. But if you're registering for a federal-only ballot, you can do so without ID. Oh, it's just wonderful. Or if you're an illegal alien and you come to and the country, you can get on a plane with a special app now, I hear. Yeah. And so... You know, <laughs> not you, Mark. Not me. Not you. You're not special enough. But anyway, the, the number of people <laughs> voting federal only went up about 10 times uh, in the last election. Yeah. In other words, you know, we used to have about 1,000 people doing... Uh, Federal only now it's up over eleven thousand. Sick, what's going on right now? It's just absolutely sick, and it's it's hard sometimes to get. In. I love doing this show. I love all you out there. Don't don't get me wrong, but sometimes it's hard to step in front of this mic and swallow some of this stuff, and it is. try to do it in a way that people can also digest and 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 still try to smile once in a while, right? I mean, it's yeah. it's it's gotten so absurd, so blatantly banana republic absurd on so many levels. I don't even know what to say anymore. All right. I do know what to tell you though, is uh, stock up on things that you can use in a crazy world. You can stock up on big things too, like a trailer, right? You can get a nice <laughs> dump trailer. You can get a flatbed trailer. So you can go get some firewood, you know, to, because they we're going to be all plugging in for our energy and all that. And that's, that's going to go great. Right. So get a, get a wood stove, get a trailer from American trailer company, North of Flagstaff. You need a trailer to haul your biomass yeah. to your biomass burner, your biomass stove. That's a dumb. They think we are American trailer company has a huge inventory on their lot. Uh, no city sales tax, veteran owned, owned company, high quality. I got a dump trailer from them. It's, it's working out just wonderful. Uh, check out their huge inventory at americantraileraz.com. That's americantraileraz.com. Representative David Cook still to come and more. I don't know how we'll get through it all. Hang tight. Back in a few. listening to the podcast please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there if you're not listening to the podcast subscribe look up the jeff orbit show also on video rumble follow us there and on youtube subscribe we appreciate everyone who's done that this is the jeff orbit show Yeah, my gutter's dripping. That little bit of snow's melting. It's been a wimpy, wimpy winter. Real wimpy. Hey, compared to last week. We're getting moisture, though, so we that's good. Moisture, that's yeah. good. Hey, if your heater goes out, call Gettles. High Desert Mechanical, family-owned company, Central Arizona, Northern Arizona. They're going to take really good care of you, just like they take care of my family. Keep us warm. Your heat goes out. You want someone to hit, hit that real quick. Gettles, High Desert Mechanical, 928-567-2200. 928-567-2200. Or go to Gettles, G-O-E. TTLS, GettlesHDM.com. Correction. Okay. So, <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. You were wrong and I was right? Is no, it? we were both wrong. Oh, okay, good. No, this is terrible. Okay. Fake so news. I was under Fake the impression news. that a felon could not run for president. 
And you were right. You can be a felon and you can be elected as president. The only thing that keeps you from being president as far as crimes is being part of insurrection or rebellion. It doesn't say I disagree. No, I it says I've got it right for me. president. It doesn't list president. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it lists president. I think that's where you're going to have to have another correction. Oh, now, I, I'm not uh, in the uh, Supreme uh, Court or anything, but. Sorry. Okay. You're right. It's an elector of president. Yeah, this or is vice post president. Civil War stuff. Yeah. It's or, not the. But, or hold any office. I don't know. I, I So, okay, I, I'll read it to you real quick. Yeah, yeah, read it, read it. No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress okay. or elector of president or vice president. Oh, an elector of president, okay. Or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state, who having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States, Anyway, engaged in insurrection, right? So mm. he did hold an office. So office, president falls under hold any office. Okay. So I, I've heard disagreeing accounts of that, but I'm not a constitutional scholar. My take as a non-lawyer is that you anybody- take, You take looking up Google? <laughs> anybody- <laughs> No, I'm, not, I'm reading actually straight from the Constitution. Oh, you're, the you're constitution. on the Constitution. Yeah, okay. I'm section three of, uh, of uh, um, uh, 14th Amendment. So, okay. Well, anybody but, out there, you let us know what you think. So anybody- who is a felon can still be in Congress and he hadn't been charged for it. He hadn't even been charged, Mark. But, okay. So if, if president Trump is convicted of insurrection or rebellion or supporting such or giving comfort to such, then he could be barred from being president or holding any office. Can you imagine what a disaster that would be for the country? That's already on edge that, you know, you got Texas right now yep. saying this with the middle finger to the feds. They're yep. saying, oh, you know, Supreme Court actually came in and had that bogus ruling that you can't protect yourself, you know, and, and the border. I mean, total junk. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, we're on, we're on the cusp here. And, you know, back to that recording we played in the beginning, it's like that just makes it even you're like, wow, how yes. bad is this? How deep is this? So going back to our, you know, DeSantis stepped down. I didn't, yeah. I just found that out. I was a Mark's been in the tax news. world. Yeah, I've been in tax world dealing with the IRS, but, uh, so it's down to Haley and Trump. Yeah. And so Trump's going to be Trump nominee. is really out is if he becomes, you know, his demise gets, you know, seriously sick, dies, or is convicted of insurrection. He's a nominee. Biden. He's going to be a nominee. Um, but I don't think Biden will be. I think they'll put in someone else. Right. Hey, we've got representative David Cook next hour. David Cook. Um, so looking forward to that. From and state, um, any comments, we want to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Hang tight. Don't go anywhere. A lot more to come. Back in a few. Thanks for listening to the Jeff Ork Show. Portions of this show may be pre-recorded. And remember, the information provided on the show does not constitute legal, medical, financial, or tax advice. All information is the opinions of the host and his guests. You should always seek the advice of a professional regarding any of these complex issues to make sure all circumstances of your situation are properly considered. This portion of the show is brought to you by Diamond Auto Glass, where the difference is clear.com. This is the Jeff Orvid Show. All right, welcome back. Hour two of the show. It's been a fast-moving show, Mark. My head's so still spinning. Going on today. Uh, we'll wrap back around to the whole Carrie Lake DeWitt purported recording, 10 minutes long, and trying to what the Daily Mail was calling bribe. What was the exact words? Bribe her to get out of the race. Yeah, they basically offered her money or a position, a position. in the company yeah, to it was, get out. It's a gnarly audio. Uh, it's a scary audio, quite frankly. Powerful people back east. Yes. Um, wow. Um, and I think this is going to blow up pretty quick here. I think you're already seeing it online. It's starting to And this apparently goes take back off. to March or earlier of last year. Last year. It's and just coming out this now. This rumor's been around for a long time. You know, people have been saying, hey, somebody tried to bribe her to stay out of the race. And mm -hmm. there's denials about it. But then this audio recording showed up all of a sudden. Yep. Don't know where it came from. Um, I could not get verification of, as to who recorded it. I also, um, I did give, um, according to my sources, um, in the Lake campaign, they're like, yeah, that's obviously her and that's him. 
right? Okay, and, so Kerry Lake and Jeff DeWitt. Yeah, and he's the chairman of the Arizona Republican Party. So um, I haven't run it through a speech analysis, vocal <laughs> analysis. And I also, um, you know, nowadays I'm always skeptical because of deep fakes. Yep, AI. AI, and you're like, anything can be generated nowadays. So um, we shall see and keep an eye on it. It did not sound good. It actually creeped me out. Creeped. I think it even creeped Mark out. Yeah, it just sounds that's, that's hard to do. Yep. All right, let's get to Representative David Cook here in just a second before I do that, though. Uh, remember, if I was selling a home in the Flagstaff area right now, I'd call Kelly Broadus with the Broadus Properties Group, brokered by EXP. Man, what a great job she does, Mark, for so many clients, getting top dollar, putting so much into these sales and listing your home um, money. I'm talking like advertising. I'm talking the, the drone videos, right, and all that, uh, the staging. Uh, call Kelly Broadus right now. She'll be able to help you out. Here's her number. 888-446-5602, 888-446-5602, or get an instant valuation at northernarizonafinehomes.com. All right, let's uh, talk with Representative David Cook. He represents uh, one of the two, Mark, uh, for LD7. There's two House representatives, which um, goes from southern part of Flagstaff uh, down into parts of the Verde Valley. Payson, um, all the way over to, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you're from the Globe area, correct? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Yes, I've been in Globe. This is I'm entering into my eighth year at the legislature. Oh, wow. Okay, so we'll get to that in a little bit because it, it's an interesting election coming up. Obviously, um, you'd be termed out on the House, and I know you've already announced LD7 for the Senate seat. Uh, so we'll talk about that in just a minute. But, how? I mean, being down there for eight, um, eight, eight sessions, I wouldn't call it sessions, but eight years, and dealing with your eighth budget, I guess, um, how's it going? What's... You know, you got Hobbs, who I think has come up with what I call a phony budget crisis. Uh, we're still going to have the third highest budget ever, uh, but she's going after the ESAs. What's, what's your take on the budget, David? Well, I, I, I've seen governors do this before, and, you know, Ducey, I was here through most of his administration. Now now we're going into the second year of the Hobbs administration. Uh, it was a different thing. Ducey would come out with, with what his ask would be, and then we would find it on a, on a, on a jump drive on our desk when we come in on a Monday morning. And we'd all have a copy of it and go through it. But the process, really, we have the best process you could possibly ask for. The governor can come out and say, this is the governor's budget, and they should. But what we do is then we get to see what, what those priorities and those wishes are. Now, we're not going to defund school choice. That is something that just never will happen. Um, school choice is good, and we know that. It is working. We know that, too. But there are places, and government isn't bloated itself. Do you know that we're number two per capita for government employee per, per citizen in the entire country? So we don't have fat in, in, in government employees or services from agencies and stuff. Where we've got it is in, in programs and, and money in which there has just been no end to. You know, stuff that has been done 10 or 15 years ago that's in the baseline budget. When majority, uh, when, when the president of the Senate was my majority leader, Warren Peterson, uh, I loved it. It was one of my best sessions ever when he was the majority leader. And I would talk to him quite often is, uh, cause they came in and they said, okay, well, we're going to go through the budget. Well, what they went through was the, was the additional or continued spending. They didn't go through what was in the baseline. And I've always said, why don't you give me that thing and let me go through there? You know, there, there's a lot of tax credits and things like that for corporations that go unused. And when you think about school choice, now that everyone, ESA started out for a smaller group and they were expanded, expanded, now what we've done is say, okay, any, any child, any family is eligible for, for a, a scholarship account. Now, why do we need STOs? Why do we need those corporate tax breaks for those STOs? Because STOs aren't needed anymore for private schools because those parents that have those kids to go to private schools can now apply for any SA. You're, you're, so there's many guess, ways we Representative can, Cook, you're saying the STOs, which is the tax credit that people were using. I still use that actually for our private school. We haven't switched over to the ESAs. So um, where they donate money um, or they, they guide their taxes, right? State, Mark, am I def- state tax credit. Oh. Yes. Yes. State yeah. tax credit. It's a state okay. tax credit. And, at, you know, in all fairness, our daughter used it last year as well. Yeah. And you switched to the ESA, so. ESA, ESA. this year. We're yeah. worried it's going to go away. What, um, so, so, so Representative so Cook, I'm, are you saying that maybe it's time for it to go away? It, it, maybe it doesn't go away. But see, like you guys are giving an example. We need to stay out in front of stuff in government. And that's what I've always done is not be reacting to these things. So we are in a, a deficit. We are short on, on cash flow. 
for many reasons. And so we're looking at everything from, from transportation projects to pushing those back. And I want to keep those dollars for transportation projects out into rural Arizona. Now, when we, so when we try to balance the ship, there's not one all fix all, but do we do away with the STOs? Probably not. If there's people still converting from those STOs over to the ESAs because they like them better, then those can be reduced. You see what I mean? So, Representative Cook, I have to remind you that uh, the STOs aren't just for the families. They also fund schools. So even though a child like mine is in the ESA this year, the school she goes to benefits from the STOs, regardless of even if all the students were getting ESAs, the school itself still benefits from the STOs. And you, Mark, might still give a... The, the, the tax, I, I you might still put money credit. into that. Okay. I do. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's complex there, Representative Cook, because it's like there's, there are, I mean, there's what, se- almost 73, 72,000 people that are in the ESA now. That thing's grown tremendously. Yeah. And I'm happy about that. I, I hope it grows. I, I, hope, I hope next year's 200,000. I mean, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you're like, oh, no, the budget at 200,000, well, right? And then what I look for is in our district is a lot of problems that are down here at the Capitol and the Phoenix, you know, Valley area. They're not our problems up there. You know, we don't have a, a charter school or, or a private school. Whatever. My kids went to Holy Angels. They went to, they went to private school at the church there until they were in the sixth grade. And we did that, too, where you could write the check and, and get the state tax credit that helps, you know, to support the school. So we understand that. But in many small rural communities, they don't have those choices. And the only thing that we have are the public district schools. So when someone wants to come cut education and they want us to talk about the ESA program, which I support, but we don't have all that many of them in, in District 7 because it goes from Oracle all the way to Flagstaff to Williams, Snowflake, Taylor, all the way back to Sholo, an entire part of Gila County, all the way to Apache Junction. It's just huge. So we have to think about each one of those communities and what they need. In a lot of places like Superior, Hayden, and Winkleman, the school district is the only choice they have, and a lot of times it's the largest employer of those small towns. Okay, so my the question public school is, district. My question is, why can't the backpack of money follow the kid? If they go to public school, the money follows them there. If they go to private school, it follows them there. If they go home school, it follows them there. Why can't the money just simply follow the student wherever the student goes? Doesn't it for the public? Agreed. Agree. That's what I say. That's what we want to do. We want to say that's why they can apply for the ESA where they open it up for private schools. And, and, and the, if that's the right choice for them, what I'm saying is, in many of these rural communities, there is no choice. The public district school is the only choice. There's no private schools. There's no charters. Or something. I, I, right. can, I can see that. And I, right. I want to be clear. I, I, I've been pretty crit- critical of public schools in general, but I live in a pretty jaded world where I'm in Flagstaff, and I have not had a good right. uh, relationship with FUSD, uh, <laughs> to <laughs> say the least. Okay, Representative David Cook is with us. Um, uh, the budget's going to be a big issue. You, you are pretty f- firm, though, and I asked this same question of Speaker uh, Ben Toma, yesterday on the program our esa is going to be safe at the end of the year your answer is we're not budget we're be- not budget okay. we're, we're not budget we, okay. we can be here until december if you want okay to. good good um go ahead mark so my question is obviously we've got a democrat governor a uh, very far leftist and you've got you have only one seat advantage in each house what compromise are the republicans going to do in order to get hobbs to sign a budget what are you going to well, flex on with her Well, that's going to be up to the leadership. You know, what what I do is my job. The the speaker, you know, when you elect a speaker of your party to run the organization, that's what you do. You're putting the trust in that person for that leadership. And so what the speaker has done is he has given me the task. Not only – most members down here are on one or two committees, okay? I'm on four, and I'm chairman of two. I've never seen a Republican member be chairman of two full standing committees. And one committee is a lot of work. So that shows the trust and what he's asking me. Like I'm on the education committee and I said, what did I do? You know, why am I on the education committee? He goes, I have to have you there because of the expenditure limit. And when you go back in history, ever since I've been at the uh, the legislature, when we, there was big heavy lifting to do this because I'm a rancher from Glow, I'm not afraid of hard work. And I always say, no one is going to outwork me down here. And what you can come down and talk to my colleagues, Democrat or Republican, they'll tell you that, that guy represents the people of his district more than anyone. Well, you deal and, with, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, and what I was going to say is about, is about what the speaker has charged you to do. When, when I look in the rear view mirror, when it gets to be time, then I'll have those conversations with the speaker about where they're at. But if we say, well, what can we come out with some compromises? 
Well, the first compromise is this, what are we going to cut? Well, the governor's offered 1% cuts in the House, the Senate, and the governor's budget, um, some other cuts. We may have to push some projects back. Like, we, we've, got, we've got $836 million setting for I-10 widening from Maricopa County line into Pinal County through the Gila River Indian community. We, we put $54 million in an account five years ago to widen the Gila River Bridge on that stretch of widening. All that money is still sitting in that bank account. The work still has not started. And what I fight for is that, you know what could we do with $52 million to improve roads and bridges in rural Arizona? We're shovel ready today. And so last year we put about $333 million into rural Arizona on those projects. I'm very proud about that. So we're, what your question was, where we're going to find consensus? Probably in uh, the housing. You know, we put some money in the housing. I think $150 million is, is bought into there. But there are things that we can find common ground on that we will support, whether it's infrastructure projects. You know, we need a lot of water utility stuff and upgrades. Um, and especially where, like, the levee up in Winslow, when as being chairman of transportation infrastructure, they brought me the project. You know, there, there was like $17 million of federal money sitting in account. Winslow had given a couple million dollars, and they needed just that little bridge state cost share money to bring all that money forward into that project in which the Army Corps of Engineers uh, decommissioned that water levy up there for those floods 15 years ago. So 15 years ago, the feds come in and said, okay, we're going to decommission this because it doesn't suit the purpose. There's, there's flood control risk and damage. Now we'll give you, if, if it's a, a $25 million job, we're going to give you 17 million. Now the state and the, and the local municipalities need to fund that. That's where we leverage our limited state dollars to pull down the federal. So to dollars. get those grants and, and so on and so forth, you got to have that match. It's our money. Yeah, we, the match. We, we want to see our money come back to Arizona. Yes. Okay. So the big question though is uh, governor Ducey, made basically a Democrat budget. He had a few Republicans break away, join the Democrats, and basically passed a Democrat Party budget. When it went to 18, over $18 billion. Yeah, and so what, now that we have a Democrat governor, what's going to prevent two Republicans in each house breaking away, joining with the Democrats, and getting a Democrat budget again? Getting what's, something like that, yeah. What's going to prevent well, that? Well, to can I, real quick, Representative Cook, it didn't happen last year that you guys did hold really firm and got... The, through the whole process, and that was uh, yeah. Hobbs I think, first. Listen, last year, last year's budget, I was very happy with it, Warren. When you call Warren Peterson, who has you know, I, I remember when I went to CPAC and got an award. He was my majority leader. There was four of us down there because you know Warren and I would be the only one voting no on some bills. And uh, so when when you look at the budget, when you go back to what Ducey did, if you'll remember, that was during the Telegraph fire that started in Superior. Okay. And my ranch, where I ranch it in Globe, I did the news interviews. I stood up and I voted no on Ducey's budget, and it was all touted about a 2.5% flat tax, 2.5% flat tax. And this is what I think you would be upset about. This is what the citizens would be upset about. Then they attacked me and said, you're a Republican, you're voting against a 2.5% flat tax. Well, first of all, you're probably paying 2.57 to 2.59. Unless you make millions of dollars a year, that's where you're at. If you make a hundred grand a year, you're paying two point five nine, I think, up to three point two if you make up to one fifty. So the two point five percent flat tax, we were only saying, well, the general person is gonna get a point oh two percent cut. It's like forty bucks a year. What was hidden in the budget, sit down, you guys sitting down? Uh, we, we've been sitting for a while. I don't know if okay. we can get up at this point. <laughs> Legs are numb. What, what, was, what was hidden in the budget is the $450 million backfill of the richest peoples in the state's tax liability of 1.5%. Because it wasn't a flat 2.5%. That is all it said. It put a cap at 45 So the millionaires and billionaires of our state was getting a backfill of state general fund money each and every year that was scored at four hundred and fifty million dollars a year. This was prior to what you did. You're saying that they were getting some kind of credit or they were That's what okay. that's what the original budget was. So the cap the cap at, at four and a half percent, remember the ballot initiative that came in for education and stuff? Well they were gonna end up paying six percent. 
And so the, the, the two and a half percent flat tax wasn't a flat tax because it had a four and a half percent cap on it. Then what you were doing is backfilling it. And so the precinct committee people and all that stuff in my district, it was eight. I went to Casa Grande. I met with all of them and all oh, they're upset and you're not for flat taxes. And I said, here's the budget. Here's the line. See this $450 million. See it's where this year, next year, next year. That's because they're taking taxpayer funds and they were going to backfill the richest people states in the state, one and a half percent of their state tax liability. Now, do you want me to vote for that? And they said, absolutely not. Okay. So that was fixed. And that was bottom fixed. line, That's people, right. people are able to maintain more of their money in their pocket. Is that what we're yes. looking at? Okay. Yeah. Because that's yeah. that's how I read the original flat tax idea, what you guys did last year. All right. Representative David Marshall's with us. Um, we only got a few minutes left and we'll look forward to having you back on again. But I do want to touch on the LD7 Senate race because I think this is going to be an interesting race because it is you and one of your uh, colleagues, uh, current Senator Wendy Rogers. Um, it's kind of that Republican versus Republican thing going on. Uh, what do you what do you see coming with this race? Well, I see that people in rural Arizona, you know, they, they know me. I'm, I'm from there. I'm for there. I've raised my family there. I've raised my business there. And, I, and I, I'm just saying I'm not bashing anybody. But if you want to run for Congress, then go run for Congress and, and leave us at the state legislature to do the state's business and, and, and what we're supposed to be doing. And that's all I've been focused on for eight years, whether it's natural resources issues, whether it's water issues, whether it's transportation issues. I know those issues and, and no one is going to outwork me down here for that. So you may, you may see some sound bites. You may see some things like that, but I'm telling you that when it comes down to it, what I've done for the people of the district, and especially for rural Arizona, uh, those things are going to start to be highlighted as this year moves on. All right. Representative Cook, thanks for the time. I'll, I'll look forward to having you back on and it will be, will be sound bited to death in this whole election process, just from, from every angle from the presidential race down. Uh, David, right. hey, we'll talk with you soon. Appreciate it. Great visiting with you guys. Have a wonderful day. Absolutely. Love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Uh, you can send me a text too. I'm going to tell you about that here in just a second because, uh, the unintended consequences, consequences of federal regulation on the, uh, the text, do not text list. I mm -hmm. ran into that as a small business day. I'll tell you about it when we come back. Speaking of phones, Just Wireless will repair your existing smartphone. They also have a great line of refurbished phones. Good for your bottom line. Good for the environment, too. Get a great new, new to you, refurbished phone at Just Wireless. Lots of accessories as well. Plus, they'll fix that battery that's dead. They'll fix that charging port. Crack screens. Just Wireless is right there on uh, Milton Avenue as I-17 comes into Flagstaff. Hang tight. If you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up The Jeff Orbit Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. You're listening to The Jeff Orbit Show. I've been shopping my insurance policies, and um, I'm really happy with Eric Boatner and Lisa Boatner at Allstate Agency. Uh, in this era of ever-increasing insurance rates, I mean, it's gone ballistic. I had one that went up like, or maybe it was two combined. It was like 5,000 bucks that the policy actually went up. And I went to Eric, Eric Boatner. Um, it was actually lower than what I was paying before that big increase. So anyone's telling you that you can't get good rates on insurance anymore. I don't think they've shopped around or maybe they're in the business. Call up Eric and Lisa Boatner, Allstate Agency, 928 928-774-8722. 928-774-8722. been encouraging Mark, Mark Howitz with me, people to text 877-9713-971. And I had somebody from, I think I can save this to discuss it with uh, Rob Wilson about stores and private businesses that can put the sign up that says um, no guns allowed, mm -hmm. which is their right. Right. But then I don't have to shop there. Right. I mean, that's You're right. Not to shop there. Yeah. So somebody sent me that on a store that was doing that. And I was like, well, that's their right to do that. And, you know, you can make decisions about where you want to shop, I guess was basically, I, I sent a text back and I use an app for texting 
typically not my own personal cell phone, right? Right. Um, and it, it sent me a warning that I have to register by January 31st and verify my number that I'm not a spammer, basically, um, and go through this whole process. So I go online and I start filling it out and it's, it's like nine miles long. So to, to, for me to send text, I can receive texts yes. at 877-9713-971, but I can't send back until I go through this lengthy verification process. Okay. So our beloved politicians <sighs> pass laws about spamming people with text messages. Because people are pissed because but, you're getting spammed all the time. But they exempted themselves as usual. So Shocking. Politicians can spam you, but they pass a law that others can't spam you. And I was looking, basically, here's what I did. So I may not be able to text you back, but you can text me. I, there were so many fields to fill out. I said, I'm a small business. I'm going to do like 10 texts a day, maybe outbound. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to figure out how I, inst you know, what's my privacy policies and all this. I was like, well, I don't go after people. They text me. Right. And then I just hit reply. <laughs> and I said, if that's not good enough, I don't care. I'm not going through. I'll tell people to email me because you're being annoying. It but was if people email you or text you, you're not going to sell their information <sighs> to another I company. Know, I know, but they should have done. This is what where government fails over and over again because we all are pissed about spam text. Yes. I'm mad that I can't pick up my phone anymore to take a call because I'm probably getting a spam call. Mm -hmm. We're all there. We know what's going on. And I'm just like, how could you not write an exclusion for the low volume people? How, right. <laughs> how, how do you not see this stuff? It's just, they, they try to fix things and oftentimes problems they cause. There'll be legislation you watch to try to fix the problem they cause. Mark, do you like a good steak? I love a good steak. Um, I'm getting ready to head on out to the rodeo steakhouse, probably not today, but maybe this weekend out in Williams, 950 North Grand Canyon Boulevard. It's right there by the Ramada Inn. Um, the rodeo steakhouse has great ribs. Who doesn't like a good rib? I was proposing yesterday that they should provide the bibs. Olivia was laughing at me because she said she can't. <laughs> you, I think it's perfectly acceptable to be, to wear a bib. So when a you're good eating good ribs, rib is loaded with barbecue sauce. Yeah, and you're going to make the a messiest mess. thing on yeah, earth. Yeah, that you could eat. Great ribs at the Rodeo Steakhouse. Also, the, the salt and pepper steaks great. Uh, basically, a whole lineup of great steaks. Uh, check out the Rodeo Steakhouse. Google the Rodeo Steakhouse. You can get make a reservation as In well. Williams. Yeah, Williams, and I love Williams. Because yeah, Williams is fun. It's charming. It's old town. It reminds me of probably what Flagstaff was long before we were here. Yes. Um, then they've got all the activities there. The Rodeo Steakhouse. Check it out. The Rodeo Steakhouse. Back in a minute. Hey, if you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up The Jeff Orvitz Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. Listening to the Jeff Orovid Show. This is the Jeff Orovid Show. Welcome back, Mark Howard. Here with me. Love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's see. Bruce writes the fact that Governor Hobbs is blaming children ESA program for Arizona's budget deficit is so wrong. I had read statements from her stating something to the effect that most students now using an ESA were previously already in private schools. That topic has been addressed already as false. Sure, there has to be some students that have been in private schools and out of public schools for a long time that are now using ESA. My point is, so what? Parents pulled their children from public school because the school was no longer providing the education that the family thought appropriate, all the while paying their taxes that go towards education, receiving no financial aid for their children, for their child, because the public school system is a train wreck. I would agree, Bruce. All they do is blame, 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 and never take responsibility of the fact that they do not know how to balance a checkbook or budget. Fire them all. <laughs> Rant over, Bruce. Hey, Bruce, I appreciate that. Yeah, blaming children. And yeah, go ahead. Okay. When people pull their kids out of public school, the money should follow the child. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. The public school is not paying to educate that child anymore. The funds should go with the child, whether he goes to private school, charter school, home school. Well, I think Bruce, whatever makes, school. Bruce makes a good point, too, because 
how many years of people that were doing like the, 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 the homeschooling mm-hmm. or whatever that now maybe are taking advantage of the ESA paid into their property taxes and paid into the state. Yes. You know, so it's like, okay, Every they get a little bit back now. Every child saved the state about $14,000 a year because that's about what it costs to educate a student in this in this state, the time you figure in the state funds, the federal funds that come in. For public schools, for, what'd you say? It's about 14000 14, yeah. That's yeah. what Speaker Thomas said yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the time you figure in the local, the state, and the federal funds, it's right around $14,000. The ESA only is about $7,000, $6,500 to $7,000. I forget the exact number. So when the child leaves the public school system or was never in it, they were saving the public school 14000 before ESA. Now they're only saving the public system 7000 it's actually, it's such a scam yeah. that Governor Hobbs is saying it's costing the state money. It's well, saving and then the I saw money. this, um, I watched that ridiculous FUSD, Flagstaff Unified School District board meeting, and they were talking about how the public schools losing money from the ESA, right? And they were like, well, the, the locals, the, the private school gets double what we do, but they didn't take into account that they get all the public, the private, I'm sorry, local money. Right. The public school gets all the local money and it's like, you're not compare. It's they're doing the, the color of money argument, the slice of the pie government spending argument, right? Yes. That, Oh, it's coming from this pot or this pot. It's all in my mind. It's all one freaking pot. Well, that, the government took it out of your pocket overflowing. via sales tax. Yeah. Where they took it out of your property pocket, taxes. property tax, vehicle registration <clears throat> tax, how, gasoline tax. However, they took it out of your pocket. It all went into their pot. <laughs> I don't care which envelope <laughs> you put it in. You still took it. You took it and yeah. you put it in different envelopes and it belongs to us. And no matter how you add it up, the public school generally costs about 14 grand per head. The private's around seven. Yes. I don't care where you're pulling the money from. That's not my problem. I'm just paying out money, paying out money, just like all you, right? You know, Ridiculous. The hospital did the same thing when they were talking about building a new hospital. They had something like $800 million set aside to build a hospital. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, they weren't giving their employees raises through the inflation. Thing. A different pot of money. And that's what they said. <laughs> we get, that's a pot of money that we can't touch. Well, what happened when they lost uh, the vote? 78% of voters said no to the hospital. All of a sudden, the hospital's like, oh, I guess we can give raises to everybody. Yeah. Well, where'd the money yeah. come from? It was, it's... And there's such staffing the issues. Game. You can't yeah, just don't say, play oh, it's envelope. in that envelope, so we can't use it. Angela plays the envelope game. She has an envelope for Christmas <laughs> presents. She has an envelope for car repairs. Like yeah. all these, she has this elaborate system, and I'm just like, yeah, just give me some money. I need to take care of this <laughs> just, issue. Let's do another one here. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. This one from Richard. Um, this is regarding Richard from Indian Wells. This is regarding the Cary Lake. Uh, we just played a tiny bit of that tape. I will take time to screen through it and comb it more you over the Daily night. Mail and listen to the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, right Daily now. Mail. Look up uh, Carrie Lake Daily Mail and you're gonna you're gonna hear the tape and it was uh, purported to be Carrie Lake, which Carrie Lake's campaign I had somebody verify that yeah that's Carrie Lake. And um the claim by Daily Mail is that the other person is uh, Jeff DeWitt who's current chairman of Arizona Republican Party. Um she even mentioned Jeff multiple times during the recording. And uh, the the claim is that he's uh you know, uh, what, what you've summed it up best. Hey, maybe go work for this company or this, these people back East can help you out. And he literally said, name your price, name your price and to not run, to not, to run. not run and carry, carry, man. You know what? Uh, this tape, apparently this has been held for a long time. She really shows her character in that because she pounds sand. She's yeah. like, no, why don't they, why don't you reveal who it is? Well, I don't want to turn my key in a car blows up kind of thing. That's, you know, that's literally what he said. Yeah. It's crazy. You, I, we didn't play that part, but, um, You'll hear it. Go look that up. But anyway, Richard wrote, I believe this is real and Carrie Lake is a big threat to the Democratic controlled Senate. I support Carrie Lake and am happy she turned them down. I too am sick of the National Republican Party, but it's now the only way to be involved to keep up the good work, Richard Indian Wells. And we don't know where the source of that tape came from or who released it. We don't know who the mysterious um, Dr. Evil East people back East were. There's no names mentioned. There's another candidate mentioned, but she, that he, he, that was quickly dispelled as no, it's not that person. You know, it's just, it's just somebody back East, Mark. There's a lot of, you know, it's the swamp. Powerful people really back, east. Swamp back East. Sick. You know, you talk and scary. People talk about the deep, deep state. And then, you know, is that, is that real? Is that <laughs> real? Well, there is a deep state. It's these people that have been so entrenched for so long and have so much power, whether they're in office or they're big funders of people in office or powerful lobbyists. Yeah. It's all the forces behind the scenes, super PAC forces, all of that. 
saying, we want this candidate, we don't want that candidate, we don't want somebody upsetting the balance of power. Yeah, and the natural order of things as we see it. Yes, most of those Republicans and most of those Democrats aren't so concerned about who come, you know, what policies and all that. They're, they just want to maintain power. And they said at one point, said they just want to make money, right? Yeah, they they just, said something that's like that. Yeah, line. the bottom line. Money and power. Who's going to make them the most money? Who are you, wait, that's where I got really frustrated with this Coconino County recorder issue with the, the alliance. Another, yeah. It sounds like another Dr. Evil thing, right? <laughs> the alliance, you know, with a cat on somebody's lap, you know, I'm now a member of the alliance. I don't want any outside group because I don't think people give that amount of money for just purely... I mean, there can be some people that have a fortune and like, I want to give it away. I want to help the orphanage over here and I want to do this. Generally, you'll do that quietly though. I don't think people that give hundreds of millions of dollars to elections departments, I, I don't trust that that's done for the best of reasons. I just don't. Call me a cynic, but uh, I don't want your money. I don't want left, right. I don't want anybody throwing that money into our election process. Okay, and in Arizona, it is illegal for to give money forces to give yeah. money to... yeah. The uh, county recorder. Oh, let me re- let me rewind. I'm not alleging that the county recorder's office got money. That I'm saying that they signed up for a subscription service. No, we to get those opposite. services. We, we have to pay for it. We didn't get the money. We paid. <laughs> How into the stupid fund. is this? And it, you know, the New York, Arizona Daily Sun did an article uh, featuring Patty Hansen. Oh, that thing stunk. The, yeah, it was. She's the county recorder here. And basically, she was saying we pay money into this membership so they can tell us how to do a better job of running our elections. Isn't that what you're what? hired to do? <laughs> did you read that article? I thought I she did. I thought she wrote the thing. Uh, yeah. It was awful. Basically. Yeah. It didn't even mention anything about Arizona law, the Zuck Bucks issue, and all the background. I was like, what is this? No. It, it, you want a good article, go to talkwithjeff.com and read that one yeah. I did. Or the Federalist article. Running elections should be simple. People vote. Yeah. You can have a machine count it, but then audit it with a hand count. I, I like what... Um, and you know, Mark was saying, from, do it both ways. Have a machine count. Have a person count. Yeah, and, and, and reconcile the numbers. Reconcile the numbers. I know. like what the hand count guy was saying. What was that hand count? Um, um, Mark Cook. Mark, Mark Cook hand count. I should. I should have this roadshow. stuff. Hand count, hand, roadshow. hand count roadshow. Hand count roadshow. Dot org. He was saying each each local precinct just you know do the elections and then you guys all run it. You have a camera there and you you have party right. You've done it. It's right and left. Uh, it's it's Democrat Republican. It's parties. It's multi. It's not like one person. Mm-hmm. And then just at the end of the night, what do you got? A few hundred ballots in each precinct, just go through and count them and then call up or send a message over to the county recorder. This is precinct 19. We have uh, 120 for Joe Biden and 123 for Donald Trump. Thanks. Have a nice night. <laughs> How hard is this? How did we used to do it? That's exactly Aliens? Sh- He's right. They should be counted at each precinct before they go <clears throat> to the recorder's office. Yeah. And then they should be counted again. Yeah, and they double check. Do it three the times. numbers are off by one, one vote, Something's wrong. Yeah. Do it three times. Okay. If you, you know, they had that issue with the hanging chad in Florida way back when. They could never get an agreed account. Remember the hanging chads with the guy with the cross eyes <laughs> looking at it? And <laughs> If you are off, I don't care if you have a million ballots cast. If you are off, when you count and recount, if you're off by one, something went wrong. Yeah. You count until you're exactly, it's like balancing your checkbook. You don't say, hey, I'm within a few dollars. It's, it's okay. I got news for you, Mark. The youngsters... Don't even know what a checkbook is. They don't is. bounce checkbooks <laughs> they anymore. Don't even know how to write I, I mentioned that to Isabel, and she's like, "Yeah, I just I do the online thing." And I was like, yeah. "And you know, Angela's still there, like you know, reconciling the checking." Oh, that's what I do. But everybody yeah, else, that's is, old school, man. They're doing Zelle and all these other things. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing, but I, I don't even know anymore. All right, Timberline Firearms and Training, a great place to get uh, lots of training for your firearms to get safety courses. I got a great idea. He's for got a great some idea. Democrats. And uh, go out to Timberline. I was over. I was listening to some Democrats on a table next to me. Yeah, and they were all upset because somebody gave assault weapons as gifts <laughs> to the, all their family members. I'm not saying do that, but I would say go to Timberline Firearms and Training and buy a gift certificate. And yeah, give that's a good that idea. Out. I wish I had family you members. Know, that Valentine's Day is coming up. You know. Yeah, that's right. I got to remember that. I wish I had family members that were giving me Timberline gift cards. Yeah. You know, support a company and people like Robin and Elise that also fight for things like the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. Five minutes north of the Flagstaff Mall, Timberline Firearms and Training, indoor shooting range, and tons of firearms, accessories, Liberty safes, um, ammunition. What yep. else? What else do you need? And then the training. Take training, that training, stop. Training. Stop the bleed course as well. Check that out. We'll see what else we can squeeze in. Don't go anywhere. More to come.
Hey, if you're listening to the podcast, please give us a great review and also give us a comment in there. If you're not listening to the podcast, subscribe. Look up The Jeff Orbit Show. Also on video, Rumble, follow us there. And on YouTube, subscribe. We appreciate everyone who's done that. This is The Jeff Orbit Show. Mark Howitz here with me. We'll, we'll wrap things up here in just a second. Don't forget about my good friend Kim Dawson at, at Nova Home Loans. Uh, if you're paying high rate credit card debt and you're like 25, 30% and you've gotten to a bad position, you owned your house a few years, maybe you got some equity built up. Why don't you call Kim Dawson? Maybe it's time to look at maybe wrapping that all up into one loan. I hate to say, hey, get another loan for a loan, but if you're paying 30%, right, Mark? It's just. That's just getting insane. Uh, Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans. Nova Home Loans, largest, air, largest privately owned mortgage lender. Mention Jeff over show. Get $250 off the lender's fee at closing. Kim will also do any kind of new financing, refinancing, second homes, vacation properties, off-grid properties. 928-310-6458. 928-310-6458. Kim Dawson, NMLS 697411. Nova Home Loans, NMLS 3087. BK number 090242. Equal housing opportunity. Subject to credit approval terms and conditions may apply. Did you read my article up at uh, talkwithjeff.com on the um, Flagstaff Sustainability Department? Highly, this, is, uh, this is highly, uh, I recommend the reading because I wrote it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so there's at least uh, 15 she, her, they, them, he, hims. Oh, I, that's Mark's sake. I didn't even read, I didn't even write about that. I'm on, that's, the, I'm on the city website. You're on the city website. Okay. I'm counting the people. Yeah, fifteen, 15. listed here with her pictures of. Uh, yeah, they're they're into the she her. They're all like they they all look very young, um, and w- whatever. My point was, and I think that's crazy. I, isn't that dying off? That whole thing isn't that like I don't see that as much anymore. It's not dying. Off. We're paying for it. The, the 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 typing on there. Yeah, no. But my point was, oh, you got she her him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. Yeah, no. The sustainability department. Uh, the director was tasked with growing the thing. And what did I say? Sixteen hundred percent or something? That, oh my goodness! Anytime the a thing government is official is tasked with growing something, ask no more. You Mission know? done. Mission accomplished. We yeah. will grow. I will. I will get this thing grown for you. But no, it, they were just formed like four years ago. Check out the article. I, you know, we got a lot of info there. Eleven full-time employees, four volunteers. The Flagstaff Sustainability Department consumes. Five percent of the city's general fund. You can't. They, Mark, Mark. They almost. They're gonna. I at this trend at this rate. They're gonna surpass parks and recreation and open space. They're getting half as far as general fund money. Nearly half as uh, the budget um, of fire department. Like oh when you. Like, what? What so is let this? Me read you this some is of the insane. Here. Yeah, go ahead. Real quick. <clears throat> the sustainability director. The Climate Action Section Director, the yes. Climate Engagement Analyst, the Resilience <laughs> Analyst, the Climate Analyst, the Climate Vulnerability and Resilience Vista, the Sustainable Workforce Development, the Youth Climate Leadership, the Energy Specialist, the Sustainability Supervisor, the Community Stewards Coordinator, the Sustainability Coordinator Number 2, the Waste <laughs> Reduction <laughs> Food System Supervisor, the Sustainability Food Systems, Recycling outreach. I mean, look, this is crazy, and and they're all tasked with getting Flagstaff to like um, what zero emissions or some crap like that, um, reducing emissions by forty four percent by two thousand thirty. And I give you the descriptions in there in this article, talkwithjeff.com, about what these people are doing, and it's like, oh, we're doing tours of um, you know invasive species and crap like that. What give it to the police and fire department or something <laughs> or the public works like. I like our sewer systems working and our roads. This is, this is unquantifiable nonsense that they're doing with our tax. 10 million, 10 million bucks, Mark. Okay. Real 10 simple. million bucks they're spending. Poorly maintained roads cause lower gas mileage in your car causes yeah. more emissions. Yeah. Wouldn't it make sense to fix the roads to save the climate? If you're worried about the climate. Mark, it makes sense for these 15 people from this department to go to the, the intersections in Flagstaff and give them a clicker to change the light so you're not idling at the light. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You'd say you'd fix the climate problem okay. more than this crap. Of these 15 people, how many of them are biking, walking, or riding the bus to work every day? I hope they, they all say they bike. 
a parking pass. No, the, at, at the white, the, the uh, sustainability um, uh, website. Yeah. It, it's like, uh, you know, I like to take uh, long bike rides and do this. And, and I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I, I, all I care about is you're spending $10 million <laughs> to come up with just nonsense. That's not going to make a, a, a lick of difference. To it's our not, lives. It's, it's, not. it's not. And it's a shame that the city of Flags have gone so far down the rabbit hole that they're spending 5% of the city's general fund on total, utter nonsense. Okay, so I just met with these people this last week to give my input. And I pointed out some of the bigger <laughs> things. They're talking about climate change and all this. And I said, I met in person, and I pointed out something like, why are we still building roads east-west? <clears throat> that means half the people have north-facing driveways, mm. and the other half have driveways that melt. If you ran the no, every new subdivision, if instead you ran the roads north south, the roads would melt faster. You'd have to run less heavy equipment down the roads to plow. You'd yep. have less potholes from freezing damage. Everybody's driveways would melt. You'd have less energy wasted on snow blowers. They just they miss the big. They picture. miss they miss the stuff that could actually make a difference. Right. I want to talk about this more tomorrow, but so much else hit today. Check out the article though. Talkwithjeff.com. Flagstaff has eleven sustainability employees. Five percent of the city's general fund. Mark, hey, I always appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Y'all have a great, safe night. Back here tomorrow. Take care. See you soon. Thanks for listening to the Jeff Orbit Show. Portions of this show may be pre-recorded. And remember, the information provided on the show does not constitute legal, medical, financial, or tax advice. All information is the opinions of the host and his guests. You should always seek the advice of a professional regarding any of these complex issues to make sure all circumstances of your situation are properly considered.